One hand, okay. Hey guys, <laughs> uh, if you can tell this isn't my normal setup, I uh, didn't feel like fighting with my second tripod because it's kind of a crappier tripod. So I, I'm not fighting with it, I just set up the ring light and just kind of, I was like, I'll hold the camera, I'll hold it. Kind of old school, right? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so this isn't going to be a long video or anything crazy. Um, I just got back from a Buddhist monastery. Um, mon monastery, yeah, monastery. Um, and it was an absolutely incredible experience. Um, I was there for three days. Um, three days of meditation, three days of almost pure silence, of chanting, of singing. Lots of singing, though, lots of singing. Um, three days of being vegan. Uh, something I didn't know that I could do. Three days that absolutely changed my life. Um, I'm not the same person I was three days ago. I'm so much better. I'm so much happier. Um, I had a lot of time to think about a lot of things. We woke up at 5 a.m. We had sitting meditation for an hour at 5.30 a.m. And then at 6.45, we had walking meditation, which is slowly walking down a path, not speaking, just thinking. And then even the meals were silent. So you sit down, and when they ring the singing bowl, uh, you can start eating. And then when they ring it again, if you're finished, you can get up and leave. And if you're not, you can stay and finish eating. Um... But and then working, you could you we could talk while we worked. Um, we helped out around the monastery, cleaned windows, pulled weeds, mopped the floors. You know, just do whatever we could to help out. And what I love the most about that was uh, all of the lay friends there. So that's like it's the people who aren't a part of the monastery that were just visiting. There were a bunch of us there. Um, when we finished our task, it wasn't like oh, I need to rush and finish so I can be done working. It was just, you know, when you finished, you finished, and then you offered to help out somebody else that maybe wasn't finished, and so all the chores and the tasks were done, and then it was lunchtime. And I have never been around such beautifully kind people where everybody just wants the best for you. Everybody wants positivity and wellness. The brothers and sisters at the monastery are... Uh, the, the monks and the nuns, I guess. Uh, I got used to calling them brothers and sisters. Um, but the brothers and sisters there, they're so funny. They're so kind and sweet. They were all Vietnamese, and uh, most of them were working on their English. And they were so sweet. And they would joke around with each other. And have you never seen a monk wearing sunglasses or a baseball cap? Like especially like an Atlanta Braves like baseball cap like it was some it was it was interesting to see like a monk outside of what you stereotypically would think a monk is doing they still they wore their robes and um, you know had their heads shaved but it was it was just so interesting to live with them and be a part of their culture and to be accepted into their culture and. While I was there, I had a lot of time to think, and I didn't really make any decisions while I was there. I just, I just thought. And then when I got back, everything just kind of felt right. I, I know like what I want to do and how I want to get to where I want to go, and I'm not really worried about a lot of the stuff that I was worried before and jobs and you know relationships that were bothering me. Like I decided what to do, and all of this was subconsciously. Just like I was just there, and I just. I don't know, just somewhere along the way I decided what to do and I'm happier. I have like new mindfulness practices that I want to recite every morning and practice. And Buddhist, Buddhism is just, it's a beautiful religion, if you want to call it a religion, um, way of thinking. Um, I like to practice Buddhism uh, non-theistically, so like without a god. So like... I don't praise Buddha as a god. And what I love the most about Buddhism is that's okay. In Buddhism, it's okay to share Buddhism with people without being like, Buddha has to be your god. And I think that's what I love 
the most about it because growing up as a Christian, like I feel like when we share Christianity with people, we're like, this is your God. Jesus is his son. You're going to worship them. And if you don't, you don't believe. And it's not about sharing all the goodness that is about Christianity. It's about sharing this is our Lord and Savior. And Buddhism gives you these guidelines, these ethics to live by, these mindfulness practices. And they don't really care if you believe or not. Like, if you do, that's cool. But they just want to spread this positive energy, this better way of thinking, this better way of treating the world and those around you. It's not like, you know, they're telling you pray uh, this many times a day and do this this many times this day and meditate all this. They're, all they're doing is telling you, like, you know, follow the path of true love. Uh, follow the acts of non-killing. Um, there's like five big ones and it's just like simple things, simple things that we honestly should do anyways. Being kind to one another, letting go of anger and agitation, stepping back, taking a moment to pause and breathe and slowing down. My goodness, I slowed down while I was there. I know I might be talking fast. I feel like I'm talking fast about this, but it's because I'm excited to share about it. Um... While you're there, the air is so still, you feel, you just feel the need to walk slow. You're told to eat slowly, and taste the food. Um, just breathe with each step and just observe. And every now and again, there were these bells that would just ring. And when you heard these bells ringing, you just stopped whatever you were doing. You stopped talking, you stopped moving, you stopped working. You took a moment and reflected on where you were right there, right then. Like, come back to the self. And then once the bells were done, you just kept going. And I thought that was incredible. And I, this is the post-glow of me being at the monastery. It was an incredible experience. If you have a chance to go visit one, to go uh, stay and be a part of the Sangha, do it. Absolutely do it. Um, I can't wait to go back. Uh, it's not something I can do all the time. It's not the closest to me, but I do plan on going back. And my goodness, I just wanted to share that with you guys and tell you guys, like, I am in such a good place in my life. Uh, lots of new videos and stuff coming out this month. It is Pride Month, so I will be producing more than my normal few. Uh, I'm not sticking to a schedule just because, you know, it's just, we're just going to go. You know, as it goes. I do have a yoga video coming out soon um, about my practice. I do have some workout videos coming out soon. I have a couple interviews coming out soon. A short film that I'm working on. Just lots of stuff coming out. And uh, I'm excited for it. And I hope you guys are excited for it. And uh, 10K is right around the corner. So, But since it is Pride Month, I will be making a couple videos sitting down and talking about some more gay experiences that I have and some things that I think would be really interesting to kind of share with you guys. Uh, just because, like, there's, you know, more experiences, the more you know, the more you can relate to, the happier you are, the happier I am that you can relate and not feel alone and all that good stuff. So uh, I guess I'm just going to close with the typical uh, tomorrow's a new day, today is a new adventure. Let's go and do it, guys. I'll see y'all later.